wintertime jug fish in Oklahoma. Can't beat it. Hey everybody, Boom Boys here. Today, we are gonna go jug fishing. We're in Southwest Oklahoma at a lake called Fort Cobb. This lake is known for its blue cats. And in the past, we have done really, really well jug fishing this lake. We've got our jugs loaded up right here. We've got all the kids loaded up. We're gonna tell you exactly how we jug fish our setup and the bait we're using. Hope you enjoy it, guys. Good, Jeremy. There is not a soul on this lake. We have not jug fished this in over a year. So we're literally, we're gonna go to deeper water. I think it's too early for these fish to be going up the river uh, to start their spawn. So we are gonna go in one of the, some of the deeper part of this lake that we've known of in the past. But again, it's just gonna be kind of potluck. So let's get going. The easiest way if possible to set out jugs is with the troll motor is just really put you in a straight line so you can focus on setting the jugs and then spread out evenly uh, across a patch. Now today, we're gonna be fishing off of a ledge here. We're gonna start out in about 20 foot of water and we're just gonna go straight out to the deeper water here. And this is gonna show us really where the fish are. So we're gonna set these jugs out and then we're gonna let them soak for about three hours. That's all we have daylight left. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back tomorrow and we're gonna check these in the morning to see what we got. Typically jug fishing, you wanna get a 12 hour soak on your jugs. And man, if you can, it's always usually better at nighttime. So it's always better to put them out in the evening and then come back the next morning and check them. Now for weights, you can use anything. These are just some pipe we have here. Here's our jug setup. All it is is a PVC pipe here and it's got a piece of rebar in the middle. And what this is, is that you put the PVC pipe like this with the rebar on the end and when the fish hits it, it'll go like this. It's a little stuck, but they'll go down the bottom. Then it will flag whenever you got a fish. So it's pretty simple to make. Now, some people use BBs. I wouldn't use that. I would use, again, a small piece of rebar, but we also have some reflectors up here at the very top. This is really nice when you're looking for these jugs, especially if big fish take seas, where you got a flashlight where you can see it shining, or if the waves are really big, it really helps you find your jugs. But these are pretty big noodles here. I'd highly recommend making these a little bit bigger because, man, it really helps uh, a big fish not taking these under. These are the clips we use at the bottom for the weights. And what we typically do is, is spread it out like that, put it in there, and then your weight's on. Super easy to do. We're gonna use hot dogs today just because it's easier. We didn't have a ton of bait left in the fridge. And now what we did with this was we cut them up and we sprayed them with some gulp crawdad juice. And then we put it in the microwave you see here. Now what the microwave does is it makes them a little bit firmer. And what that does is it keeps it on the hook a little bit better. And also it gets some of that juice embedded inside the hot dog. Just like that, we got this set. We're gonna put it in the water like that. Now we typically put our hooks towards the bottom a little bit. Most of your fish are gonna be at the bottom. Um, so we don't typically go too much. Now a lot of the times guys, we, we do do three hooks, but most of the time it's going to be on your bottom hook or two that you're going to catch the fish. So, you know, and, and, and also what we found is the more hooks guys, it's just a mess. You know, you set out these jugs and you know, you typically get in a big old tangled up mess. So here we're on bottom just like this. And what you're going to do is when you're on bottom, you're going to take it. Just put a little half hitch in this thing. So look at that, grab it, a little half hitch right here. There you are. Now what you're gonna do is, if you're gonna put your weight at the end, it's gonna lay flat in the water. And then when they get it, it's gonna pull on this side like this and they'll start bobbing. So we'll put the weight like that. Just lay it out there, just like that. Now I've got the troll motor going, so it makes this really easy to do. By the time I get this next one set up, I'll be at a good distance away from this other one. So there's a lot of other ways you can do weights. I mean, there's some of you guys that are doing a lot better job at this and probably a lot fancier than what we've got. This is like a little solo cup with just some metal in there, make from some concrete and just hook it in there like that, just like that. <laughs> hook it in there like that, just like that and that thing's hooked. Don't get too fancy with this because you will lose a lot of jugs. It's just the nature of jug fishing. You're gonna lose a lot of jugs. Big fish will get on them. Um, unfortunately, you'll get some stolen, but that's just kind of the part of it. Now, you might be thinking hot dogs, but you know, that's probably not the purest way of catching a catfish. 
but they work really well. We've caught some really big catfish on hot dogs and today was kind of a spur of moment trip with the family and it's just an easy way to slow us down a little bit, get too far from the other one. There we go on bottom, half hitch. Like that. Throw it out there. And you can see that other one right kind of there. So if you're camping or you're gonna, you know, have your jugs out a couple days, what I like to do is I like to set them out in diff different depths. And then the next day you'll figure out what depth the fish are at. And then you can start picking up your jugs and you know put put the rest of them in that same depth. Here's kind of another little weight right here. Again. We're not too fancy with this, but I'm gonna tell you these quick clips here, guys, are the real deal, man. This makes it so easy because you don't want your weight with your jug in, in the bucket here because, man, they are a lot harder to store and carry whenever you've got all these jugs. Now in Oklahoma, you can fish 20 jugs a person, which, man, I think that's really generous because, man, you can really uh, put out a lot of hooks but man, this is a good way for us to catch a lot of fish for our freezer. Um, I'm a big catfish eater and, you know, I love catfish and this is a way we don't, you know, typically get out catfish much as we like as much as we striper fish and hybrid fish. These noodles, guys, are the way to go. Now you can get some store-bought ones like the Oki Flipper. You can look that up. I mean, those are nice, guys, but... Um, you know, and they're handy because they're already pre-made. But man, these noodles, you can't hardly beat them. How, how easy they are and how easy they are to carry. Because I will say about the Oki Flipper is they are a little bit harder to store and carry just because of the circular shape in them. So when you're setting out jugs, just a little tip is put them in a line because when you're going to look for them, it's just a lot easier to look for them in a line. As you can see here, we're going, kind of going there. Then we went back that way. But as long as they're in a line here, it makes it a lot easier when you're gonna find these, uh, when you're coming back to look for them, especially whenever one is missing. If you put four here, five there, it's really difficult to know uh, where they're all at and they can come up missing really quick, guys. Another tip about making your jugs is make sure you put a lot of line on it. Now, I know you may be thinking, well, I'm only fishing 20 foot of water, but you wanna put as much line on it as deep as a lake is because when a big fish will get it if he takes it to deep water he may hold under your jug especially if you're if you're not making your your jugs as big and i've seen them you know where people put a heavy heavy weight on them and they go to deep water and the, these will go completely underneath the water and you'll never see it again because that extra weight is helping that fish hold down your jug so that's just the thing make sure you put enough line on there where you know the fish isn't going to go to deeper water than what your jug can handle i like to use bigger string and the reason is it's just easier to handle with your hands when you're using really really small braided nylon again if you're going to do anything this is not braided nylon but it's not as important when you go to a bigger string if you go smaller string make sure you go braided nylon if not man i tell you what when you start getting a fish on there catfish and they start rolling it makes your life miserable trying to get it undone again how these little clips work right here just go like that expose that little little hook put it in there and once it closes on there there it goes just like that super easy we've tried a lot of different ways these are probably the by far the easiest way you can uh, put weights on these things now we've had them fail before typically like you know if you're stuck on bottom or something like that but you know for the day in day out fishing or jug fishing by far the best hook you can use to clip your weights on jugs have been soaking for about 30 minutes we went somewhere else and was fishing now we came back we have one marking right now right there in front of john Barry. hey dad how about he gets it with the hook and i reel it in it's got fish. Huh? It's got fish. It's That one? The jug's been soaking for about an hour more. So I think we have a jug flagging here. Daddy! you feel a fish on there? Yeah. Is it pulling? I don't know. There's that big weight on there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right there. Is it a fish? Uh, maybe. Maybe. I'm just trying to stay calm. Yeah. All right, stay calm. All right, come on. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, oh he's a, you, got, you got a fish, you got a fish, you got a fish. Got a fish? All right, get in that. Get in that, get in that. It's a big oh! one. It's a big oh, one, baby. It's a oh! big one. Get the big yeah. net. Get the big net. Oh, it's a big net. I told you. Hey, look at him, look at it. So the jugs were sitting about an hour and a half soaked. And man, look at this, on a hot dog, guys. Look at this big old beast, man. He is a okay, fatty. I'm gonna kiss him, Dad. Here, All can right, I kiss, hold him? Right there. I already kissed him. Oh, guaranteed. <laughs> now that's what I'm talking about. That's a fisherman's daughter right there. Two, three. He's 34 and a half inches. All right, big boy. Get back there in the water. Well, we got that one 34 and a half incher, man, on a two and a half hour soak and we miss those two fish. So I would say it is gonna be really, really interesting in the morning, guys. I cannot wait to see what these jugs are gonna produce in the morning. I have a feeling we might come out here and these jugs might be all over this lake. So we'll see in the morning. Good morning, we're back here on Fort Cobb Lake. It's the next morning and it's pretty chilly this morning. It's supposed to rain tonight. So I have a feeling that it's gonna be an amazing day today with this front pushing through and it's February in Oklahoma. And so this is a time that big cats will buy I uh, mean, they feed up really, really heavy before they go up the rivers to spawn. So it's like the day before Christmas, you know, when you go out there checking these jugs. So I got my dad with me today. I let the boys sleep in today. But anyways, let's go check these jugs. That's been out here. So this happens quite a bit, guys, is that this is an old jug here that we saw. Nobody's on the lake. Uh, it's in a weird spot. We're gonna pick it up and dispose of it. Um, it's been here a long time, boss is on it. A lot of people lose their jugs or you know, a lot of people just don't really come look for them. Or, but a lot of times the fish takes them off too. So that's a good thing guys. If you see a jug in the middle of nowhere, off, uh, close to shore, you know, pick it up, throw it away. I mean, these things got a lot of hooks on them. First fish guys, look at them all tangled up right there. Mr. Twister. Well, these buckets are really good. These are uh, protein feeders for cattle. These are really good for, for putting fish. You can see this one had one. Look how that line's tangled up there. This thing spun off. This is really common, these catfish. Man, they get on this and they get caught up. Look at that, he spun that cord on it and then it got them off. Yeah. I feel some weight on it, guys. Good size. Woo. Good size one. It's a big, a good eater. Blue. 29 and a half. 29 and a half inch, guys. It's crazy, guys. A big fish like that didn't even move this jug the winter time. You know, summertime, I think this jug would have been in a different spot. Winter time, though. I'm not gonna carry them off as far. When rigging these back up, it's kind of nice, these clips. Just take that clip right there, hook it into the line right there. And this thing ain't going anywhere. You won't have strings, no tangles up the next time. Oh, look at this. Look at this little guy, little bitty guy. Make a good eater though. Look at that little guy. Looks like out here in the deep water, just some small ones. There's a lot of bait fish on the bottom here, guys. A lot, a lot of bait fish here. Look at that. This was not flagged either, guys. Good little, good little eater right there. Great way, guys, to fill the freeze up with catfish. If you're a catfish meat lover like me, man, this is a good way to fill the freezer up. Yeah, he's all tangled up. <laughs> Eight fish, including that one from last night. That would make nine on the first set here. Man, what a great trip here on Fort Cobb in the winter time, man. A great way to fill your freezer. Nice bunch of fish we got right there. Well guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please up to the Boom Boys and we'll see you on the next one.